Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. I'm like uh, a minute early. I'm nearly th two minutes late on my phone. I have too many clocks here. <laughs> uh, six o'clock on this old phone. Huh. Well, hmm. I don't guess the time. Ah, it's seven o'clock. Hey, it's seven o'clock. I made it on time. How are you doing today? It is Friday. Yes, yes, yes. Went and got Seth's Friday shake today. Ugh. Did it stop? No. I don't know why that does that. It's okay, there we are. Well, I'm getting my music going. Lots of craziness happening today. Our senators went to the border, saw how bad it was at the borders. I don't know. I don't have that much to say about that. So tomorrow night, I am going to the event here in Glen Rose for human trafficking called stop stop something what's on my phone oh wait it's here too well, it's not on this page I don't think I shared it here no I didn't I did a lot of activity today on the uh, Facebook, but it was all on my other page. Maybe I can pull it up. I don't think so. I gotta come over here. Sorry, other camera. I hope that doesn't, that shouldn't cover it up. It just covers up what I can see. Which sometimes, that might not be a bad thing. I might like that. Okay, what I do with it? There it is called A Thrill of Hope Benefit Concert for Human Trafficking and I do not know who these people are um, but they are a North Texas organization and so I want to go and support them they are in Fort Worth Texas so I am going to do that tomorrow night I think I'm going to go without Seth I don't know how graphic the stories will be. I don't know. But I'm going to go. I encourage any of you parents or grandparents to go and learn more about human trafficking and how they prey on our innocent children. Okay, so that's what a lot of what was at the border was about too. But that is not what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about um, who leads us. Who leads us. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about who leads us and how, how he leads us. And I think that will be a good discussion. And uh, I forgot to put my rings on tonight, but I went, I went to town with no jewelry today, which was quite interesting. Anyway, I am going to go ahead and pray and we will get into the lesson. And I'm sorry I'm rambling, but I was sitting here listening to something, and I was like, well, I sure am sleepy. I don't know what it is about 7 o'clock that I get sleepy, but I do. All right, well, let's pray. God, we just come to you, and we thank you, God, because you are our uh, everlasting Father. You are our creator, our sustainer, our protector. Our provider God you are our shelter in the storm you are our healer God you are on your throne and you are in control there is nothing that goes on that you do not see or hear God you are aware of everything and uh, God you are caring and loving and kind and patient and forgiving God there is no God like you God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would 
open up their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. God, we pray for the prodigals to come home. We just pray for them to repent and to return to the relationship that they once had with you. We also pray, God, for all the disasters, the disastrous storms yesterday, God. We just pray for these people. Really haven't heard anything. I've seen some pictures. I'm going to try to do some research tonight. But God, just please be with them. Please meet their needs. God, we just pray for, um, we pray for these kids at the border. We pray for all these migrants, God, that felt like they were invited in. But then when they got here, it wasn't quite what they thought. And I'm sure the trip wasn't quite what they thought either. God, I just pray that now that they're here, that you would, um, I don't know, I'll pray for your will in this situation, God. It's just a tough one. It's a tough situation. It's so many bad things happen on the way here, God. I don't see sending my child by themselves. I, I don't know. I'm not going to judge people that I don't know, and I don't know their circumstances. God, I do know that there are a lot of bad things that are happening on the way, and there are a lot of bad things that will happen to these children, that they will get passed through the human trafficking system to another family that will human traffic them. God, we just pray for safety for these. And we pray, God, that um, you would just be with the people that have lost loved ones, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, and just let them feel your presence, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm so sleepy. Let me get a drink of water. Deep breath always helps. Okay, I'm going to find me some music. That will probably help to wake me up. Okay. So let's get into the Word. Let's get into God's Word. I can't decide which one of these I want to read first. I think maybe... Psalm 23. And I know I read this a lot. This is my peace place where I go. I go here for peace. Um, I like the way this is worded. This is another Psalm of David. I seem to like Psalms that David wrote. And this is one of the more well-known Psalms. So, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a place before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So let's break this down. So the Lord is our shepherd. The Lord provides for what we need. It says, I shall not want. So he is going to meet your provisions. He is going to provide what you need. What you need and sometimes what you want to. But mostly what you need. He is going to provide your needs. He uh, makes us to lie down in green pastures. Well, in green pastures, you know, if we have to look at it from the standpoint of a sheep. 
in green pastures, you're going to have plenty to eat. You're going to have what you need. Um, he leadeth me beside still waters. You'll have plenty to drink. You'll have, it won't be treacherous to get a drink. It will be easy to get a drink because the waters are still. He restores my soul. He, he, um, he forgives us. And he restores our soul to what our soul should be. Um, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. He, he shows us the way. He leads us in, in the path that we need to be on. And when we walk in the shadow of the valley of death, we're not alone. We don't have to fear evil because we are never alone. We are protected. We are provided for. We are protected. We are led. He leads us. And uh, his rod and his staff, they comfort me. Well, you know, he disciplines us. Sometimes we have to be disciplined. Uh, sometimes he takes that staff and he leads us away from a cliff. <laughs> you know, the shepherd, that is his job, is to watch over the sheep, to take care of the sheep, to protect the sheep, to make sure the sheep have enough to eat and drink. That's his job. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. So he prepares a table before, for us before our enemies. So, that's a hard one. Let me think about that. So before our enemies, they know that we belong to Him, that He is the one that's providing for us. That's kind of how I take that. He anoints our head with oil, and our cup runneth over because it's just we're so anointed by Him. So surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. So goodness and mercy we will have because of Jesus. Things won't be perfect. Things will never be perfect. Just like, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we're going to have troubles. We're going to have problems. We're going to have tribulations. We're going to have tests that we can turn into a testimony. We're going to have trials that... We, that Jesus will help us turn into triumphs. So, but we will have goodness and mercy through all that. We will have goodness and mercy from the shepherd. And then we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So this is my peace. If I ever don't have peace, I want to read this because this gives me peace. This gives me comfort. This gives me direction. I love Psalm 23. So let's expand on the shepherd some by going to John 10. And I nearly read this last night and I thought, no, I'm going to save it for another night. And so I just really felt like tonight was it. And I've read this before. I have talked about Jesus being the shepherd before. But sometimes it is not a bad idea to go and revisit what we have read before. And John is really long. I mean, John 10. This is John 10. John 10 is really long. So let me get some water. And I may stop periodically as the Holy Spirit reveals things to me. Okay, so this is titled in my Bible, The Good Shepherd. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of the strangers. So you know what? We know the voice of Jesus. We know what Jesus' voice sounds like. We know that Jesus is leading us, and we are following him. And just like the sheep, we need to stay close because danger can crop up at any time. So we need to stay close to the shepherd. And um, he said, anyone that enters the door um, except for the shepherd, anyone that enters not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way is a thief and a robber so is not Jesus so if somebody tells you hey I found a shortcut to heaven hey you don't have to go through Jesus you can just do this you can just like be really good and you know you don't have to go through Jesus well that's a lie that is not true okay this parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were, which he spake unto them. A lot of times the apostles did not understand what he was talking about because he spoke in parables. He spoke in stories. And a lot of times they did not know what he was talking about. Then said Jesus unto them, but you know what? Jesus knew that they didn't understand. And so he would explain it to them. And so that is that is great that he takes the time to explain uh, when they don't understand. You know, some people would have just been like, I'm sorry you don't understand. I'm moving on to something else. But he takes the time to explain what he's talking about. So he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Okay, Jesus gave his life for us. We are his sheep. He gave his life for us. Really, just more than us, for everyone. He gave his life for everyone. I lost my place. Um, but he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep the hireling the hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep i am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine as the Father knoweth me, that's a little, I need it that strong, but it's a little loud. It's a little warm in my office today. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Okay, well, about a couple of years ago, that just really hit me, because I've read it a hundred times. 
and other sheep I have. And so to me, what he is saying with the other sheep I have, these are the ones that God knows are going to accept Jesus, accept him as their shepherd. Um, but we don't know that. We don't know that. So that is why we have to share God's truths in the gospel of Jesus with others, because we don't know who this is. We don't know who these people are. But there will be one fold and one shepherd. So we will all be together, all of us, even these people that haven't come yet, will all be in one sheepfold with one shepherd, and that's Jesus. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be pointing at you. Um, there was a division, therefore, again, among the Jews for these sayings. They really didn't understand what he was talking about. Even though he, he was explaining it to them very clearly explained it very clearly but they didn't understand and many of them said he hath a devil and is mad why hear ye him others said these are not of the words of him that hath the devil can a devil open the eyes of the blind and it was at jerusalem the feast of the dedication excuse me and it was winter and jesus walked in the temple in solomon's porch then came the Jews, excuse me, round about him, and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. And so Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Again, we know his voice, and we follow him. We hear his voice, we know his voice, we follow him. So that is how we do as his sheep. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man, ha no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. They were going to stone him. For saying that, I don't, you know, Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, it is not written in your law, I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, the scripture cannot be broken. Say ye of him, whom the Father hath sanctified, and sent into the world, thou blasphemest. Because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though, if I do, Though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me, and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand, and went away again beyond Jordan, into the place where John at first baptized. And there he abode, and many resorted unto him, and said, John did no miracle, 
but all things that John spake of this man were true, and many believed on him there. So he's telling them the truth, but many did not want to believe. But Jesus is our good shepherd, and we hear his voice. We know his voice, and we follow. We follow him. And like I said, the closer we stay to him, the safer we are. Because there are so many, just like we read down here, that um, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. So that thief is our enemy. And he comes. He comes. If we don't stay close to the Good Shepherd, He will destroy us. He will. He will find. He will find a crack in our Christianity where He can just step right through, and uh, create a lot of trouble in our families, in our lives. So we need to stay close to the Good Shepherd, and that is Jesus. So the answer to the question is of who leads us is Jesus. Jesus, our good shepherd, leads us. Okay, well, I really didn't have anything to share that I shared on Facebook because the song that I shared really didn't have anything to do with the lesson. I can't even, oh. It was a really good song, though. It's called He Is by David Crowder. So look it up because it came out today, and it is very good. And I didn't put it on my page, but it is on my regular page, Facebook page, for today. All right. Well, let's talk about... Uh, my meeting that I had and in my notes I had John 10 the Good Shepherd and so good morning God good morning child I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings child new opportunities to share my truths in the gospel of Jesus a new beautiful day child and it was a beautiful day today uh, Seth and I went and got him his Friday milkshake and I got me a dipped cone while we were there. That's one of my weaknesses during the summer are chocolate dipped cones. They're so good. And I said, thank you God for another day of mercies and blessings of new opportunities to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. A new beautiful day, God. Thank you for all of my blessings, God. Help me to be who you want me to be. And he said, Child, so many things behind so many things behind closed doors took place this week. Things that have not been revealed yet. Secretive meetings, child. Much will be revealed in the next few weeks about them. You are watching a movie. All of the world is right now. Soon all truth will be revealed. Be strong and courageous, child. Embrace for impact, too. My children will be protected. The ones that will leave with Jesus will be protected until then. They are his sheep that have been chosen for this time to fulfill their plan and purpose through him. Many are chosen to join, though, and these are the ones that my truths must be shared with. <clears throat> These are the ones that my children must invite into my kingdom because time is running out quickly and soon Jesus comes so quickly that people will not believe what happened and will believe the lies. Uh, leave the truth behind in many places so the new occupiers of your home will know the truth and not buy into the lies of the father of lies of old and his followers. <clears throat> I'm sorry.
and I said I see all this very clearly God and hear it too I will do all that you ask I will be strong and courageous and be braced for impact I will leave your truth behind also thank you for meeting with me today God please raise up your army of all generations tribes and tongues to stand against this evil send a revival God to our world I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. Give my mama and daddy a hug, God. I love you too, my child. Be ready for the reunion. I can't wait to see all of you here again, child. Safe forever. And I said, Maranatha, God. Oh, so that has been my day. I nearly burned my beans that I nearly burned last night, but I caught them in time. They weren't quite done last night. I ate some earlier and I was like, these are a bit on the crunchy side. All right, how do we want to share the gospel tonight? I really like this. this. I'm glad our pastor bought these. I prefer them in uh, English, though. Cause sometimes I flip it over on the Hispanic side. I don't have anything against it. I just cannot read Spanish that well. Okay, so the gold. First of all, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. The gold represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you, and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. Okay, so the, the black with the question mark. See if I can get it a little closer for this camera down here. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. The first question Mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? How can our sins be removed so that we can know God? Alright, well the red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life. But he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So the white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash away our sins anyway? Oh, how can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So, uh, this question Mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? My left eye is just doing really weird stuff. It really itches a lot lately. Okay. So if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior. Sorry. Then repeat this prayer after me. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you.
I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to, to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, I'm listening to all men. Not a coincidence. Okay. So the green color, the green color represents growth in your relationship growth in your relationship with God these symbols show the area of growth okay so we have the heart we have the heart the greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart soul mind and strength and that we love our neighbors as ourselves love God love people so then the next one is the Bible read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love the next one is prayer pray to God constantly and share your thoughts needs and desires with him the next one is when we are baptized we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person that like being born all over again. The next one is fellowship. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. It really is. Uh, share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him tell as many people as you can so that is the world and the cross yeah the world and the cross so we need to tell others so if you did say that prayer and you were sincere about it inviting Jesus into your life to be your Savior then welcome to the family the kingdom family of God you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus His Son. The angels are rejoicing in heaven and your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So when Jesus comes, in that instant, in that twinkling of an eye, you will go to. So just like that band said, um, do try to read the Bible every day and start in Matthew and uh, pray in praise. And pray for God to send you to the church where you can grow the most that preaches the word. And the word of Jesus, the word of God. All right. So it is time to give you God's blessing and get off of here. This time went really fast tonight. I guess it's a good thing because I am so sleepy again. I don't want to have to start drinking coffee to get through this time. I don't know why I'm so sleepy. I guess I had some sugar today and that does tend to make me a little bit sleepier. All right, I need to be in numbers. Okay, so in number 6, 24 through 26, it says, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Peace is not overrated. We need peace. We need lots of peace. 
So, okay. What are some things that we need to pray for? We need to pray for the border. It is like, it's horrific there. They have um, in one facility that is for 250 people, they have 4,000. And that is just way overcrowded. That is inhumane. And that is a huge fire hazard. That I'm surprised the fire marshal hasn't come in and said, you can't do this. That's a huge fire hazard. Um, it's way overcrowded. Way overcrowded. The kids are sleeping on their sides because they cannot sleep on their backs because they're packed in like sardines to sleep. I'm sorry, but that is not, that's not the way you treat people from a different country. And that's not the way you treat Americans either. But I'm not going to say what I want to say on here about all that. Um, but I do want to pray about it. I do want to pray about the storms that Alabama had yesterday and maybe some other states too. I really haven't had time to um, check on any of that today because I've had a pretty busy day. Uh, and um, But I'm going to check on it tonight. The thing is, God knows what states were affected with the storms last night. And He knows it all. God knows that there is a master plan and purpose that is taking place that we may not even understand. You know, someday we may, and then someday it may not matter. But we just need to continue to trust God, trust Jesus as our shepherd to protect us, to provide for us, to be that shepherd that we need out here so much evil so much evil taking place and I've started praying that God would raise up a mighty army of Christians that will stand for truth that will know truth and will stand for truth um, because I think that if he raises up this mighty army of all nationalities that I think I know that we are the majority I know that so I think we ought to pray for that we ought to pray for this mighty army of Christians that know the truth that will stand for the truth that love the truth that will not buy into any of the lies that we have been told. About the border or anything else that we could have been told lies about. You know, the truth is always, always going to come out. It's always going to come out. So lies aren't even worth the time. Lies change and they shift and they're not always the same. But the truth always stays the same. You always know the truth because it's the same. Day after day, the truth remains the same. It does not change. Lies shift and they, you know, things get added, things get taken away because people can't remember because it's not true. It's a lie. So, let's pray about that too. Let's pray about all truth surfacing. Let's pray. I really don't know of any sick people right now that I'm praying for. Um, everybody I know is well, which is great. I hope everybody stays like that. All right, well, let's go to God in prayer. And... Uh, Anything that you want to add in the comments, please feel free to. Even if you don't like what I'm doing, just, you know, I'm going to be obedient to God. That is most important to me, is being obedient to God. But if you don't like it, you are free to say what you don't like. 
because I am I so respect other people's opinions I am of the age group that we can agree to disagree and we can still be friends I am not going to cancel culture anyone because I think that's just stupid so anyway all right let's pray God we just come to you and um, first of all God we just want to lift up the state of Alabama that had this the really bad storms God and all the other states that did too that were affected God just please be with these people please meet their needs God in this in this time of need and please just uh, let them feel your presence we just pray for them to experience the hands and feet of Jesus and the loving compassion of Jesus through others. God, we just uh, we just lift them up to you. And God, we know this is the time of year where we do have some really, really tremendous tornadic storms, God. So please just protect us and just be with us, God. God, we do pray for that massive army of Christians God to stand up for the truth to stand on your word to stand with Jesus to be led by Jesus God we just pray for that we pray for all generations the younger to the older God for us just all to stand up God just raise up this mighty army God, I saw some examples of that this afternoon as I was watching the live um, speakers at the border, God. I saw some boldness. I saw some of your children stand up for truth. I heard some of the stories that broke my heart, God, for some of the things that your innocent children are being put through right now. But God, we know that you are always have a watchful eye on them, God. And that we know that if they don't receive justice here, that justice is coming. And judgment, mighty judgment is coming. In the name of these innocent children, in the name of these innocent teens, these women that are preyed upon, God, on this trip. Probably, probably boys too, God. We just pray, God, that we pray for a more humane situation, God, to come about. We pray for For them to close our borders, God, so that no more people will have to go through what these are going through. Enough is enough, God. Enough is enough. God, we just thank you, though. We thank you for your sovereignty. We thank you that we can trust you, God. We thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us for giving us protection, God, for providing for us, for sending us a Savior that would be our Good Shepherd, that would meet every need that we ever have, God, that He would be with us in the valley, He would be with us on the mountain, God, that He would just be with us at all times, and that it's never Him that leaves, it's us that stray away. We get sidetracked, God, and we start following something else. God, please bring us back. Bring us back to Jesus. Bring us back where we need to be. God, I just lift up Josie to you and her family. I just pray that you would protect them and provide for them and bless them. And do the same for my family and any families of anyone that comes on here, God. Please just bless them. Protect them and provide for them, God. And just be a presence in their lives. Help them to seek you every day through your word, through prayer, and through praise. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, my friends, my friends, my pray and share warriors, it is time for me to go. I'm going to show you my t-shirt. It says, Property of 
Jesus. Uh, John 3.16. I am the property of Jesus. He is my shepherd. I didn't have a shepherd t-shirt. This is about the closest thing I have. I kind of like to match my t-shirt up with my lesson if I can. I have lots of t-shirts. I have a lot of Christian t-shirts. A lot of uh, concert t-shirts. But uh, I am going to get off of here right now. And uh, my tummy is not real happy with me. I think it's my fault. So, and I'm going to pray for my cat, too. She has slept all day. And God, I just pray for Gracie. I just, it's so unusual for her to just sleep all day and not be under my feet when I'm in the kitchen, God. Please just heal her body and help her to feel better. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Because our cats, our dogs, they're family. And, uh... I don't know, she's usually in the kitchen every time I'm in the kitchen. I've been in the kitchen several times today, and she's just not. She's laying on our bed. I don't know if I can take her temperature. That's. <laughs> I know how they do it at the vet. I'm not. I don't have that kind of temperature thing. Um, but I'm a little bit concerned about her. I'm gonna go get her up and see if she'll eat something. I may have to cook her some chicken or something. Okay, well, um, y'all have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. Like I said, I will not be here tomorrow night. I'm going to be at this fundraiser. And um, I'm not excited about what it's about. But um, I'm praying about maybe being able to volunteer for them. I don't know what that would look like. You know, that's God's purview if that would work out. I don't want to be driving to Fort Worth. Um, but if I could do something here locally, that would be pretty awesome. I wish that... I so wish that this wasn't a thing. Because it breaks my heart. I have my... I have my PFF Freedom bracelet on and I've changed my thing to pray for freedom but this was my first design that I made I'm gonna make some I may I may give some away tomorrow and then again I may not I don't know I just kind of want to go and um, I hope there's a lot of parents and grandparents that go because it's so important things can happen so quickly with our kids uh, things that seem innocent are not innocent these days and uh, there's perpetrators on the internet all the time looking for new prey so please monitor what your kids do on the internet and on their phones because these are just like walk-in computers you can do anything on one of these um, so I never thought that we would have walk around computers but we do I've had like three or four of them now so anyway um, if you live in this area it's going to be at the high school at 530 I think 530 to 7 I'm not sure how long it lasts but I'm going to go I've made arrangements I have a babysitter I'm going I may see if some of my friends want to go and um Anyway, I'm rambling because I'm sleepy. Um, okay. So, much love. Much love. Much love. Much love. God bless all you and your families abundantly. Much love and cyber hugs. Alright, good night.